Divine Source, Great Spirit, we come this day with open minds and open hearts. We come here looking to be shown the way by you, looking to have our minds and our hearts emptied more completely so that we may be fully in the channel with you. By your love, by your grace, we receive this gift for one and for all. And so it is. Welcome to Talking Spirit. My name is Yuta, and I'm back with my lovely friend, Elizabeth. Greetings, everyone. Yeah, welcome back. We've been discussing a topic kind of since last night. I got a little message from Elizabeth last night just with some ideas. And it's basically around this idea that as we find ourselves here, our big goal is to be in the channel with the spirit and to allow the spirit to work through us and connect to people through us and shine the light of the spirit through us. And in that function, we, well, some of us, <laughs> I think we'll find ourselves in a role sometimes where it seems like we're put into a position where we are asked to help others or facilitate others and, you know, generally speaking, connect with other people in a helpful way that maybe helps usher them along on their journey or you know, even just for our own expansion as well to connect with others while letting the spirit really just pour through in the most helpful way. And both Elizabeth and I, and I'm sure many who are on this path, have come to these places as well. But we we come to a point sometimes in that function of really sharing the spirit where there's a discernment that has to come in. And sometimes, you know, even the spirit will stop us from saying something we know could be helpful because maybe in that very speci specific situation, it's actually going to maybe not be so helpful. And in fact, might prolong something for somebody else that they're you know, having to figure out on their own with their own connection with spirit. So yeah, we often say this, you know, we come unscripted to these recordings. So I'm curious to see where the spirit takes us today with it. And I'll send it over to you and see what pops in for you, Elizabeth. Yeah, I was just sitting here as I was listening to you thinking, I don't even remember what was coming through last night <laughs> that that led us to here. You know, it's uh, it's such a curious dance sometimes. But there, you know, there was just something very compelling showing up last night. And, you know, there's a little bit of of the message in that is that we often just don't really know what's going on. We often don't really know how the spirit is orchestrating things for us. Um, so there's something really helpful in what's going to come forth for my mind specifically. You know, we're meant to walk with others alongside us throughout this journey at times. Uh, but it really is an inner journey. It really is a solo path, you might say. And yet we do have this inner guide and we do have these symbols of real way showers that are available to us. And, and I certainly have experienced a lot of inner direction from the spirit and a lot of seeming reflections of helpers out on the world stage. And no particular way is good or bad. It's just, you know, what's going to work for you. Um, but I did have, when I got on my path, I did have a lot of people show up very differently than my teachers in the family showed up. And some of the most helpful ones really were the ones that landed a little nugget on my doorstep, but then kind of turned their back on me. They're kind of like, what are you going to do with this? You know, it worked for me, but 
you'll have to choose for yourself, you know, and there were some of those energetics in my day yesterday and in the last couple of weeks with somebody in my life of lots of helpful messages coming in and lots of in the moment having to dance with the spirit and dance with the energies that we're presenting for healing. And I still have a real impulse that shows up sometimes because the spirit's message for me comes in very immediately. It comes in very swiftly. And so it's almost like I can't stop myself to deliver a message. But there is still an impulse that I watch regularly of a fixing mechanism, a wanting to be so-called helpful when it may not be mechanism. So I have to stay really awake and aware in dancing between these worlds with the spirit's messages, with being in the channel, and then with seemingly delivering it here to others. And so, yeah, I've just seen that it's so vital that we really, really, really keep all through the day coming back to spirit. What do you want to do with this? What do you want to do with this? What do you want to do with this? And I forget all the time or I fall out of my alignment regularly, but it's pretty swift that I come back in. We talk all the time about it. It's such a dance. It's such a dance learning how to be truly helpful. And there was some song that came on as I was driving. I'm actually sitting outside of a library using their Wi-Fi at the moment. And as I was driving here, there was a song, a Fiona Apple song that came on and it's called something like not love. You know, we've been so programmed to think about what's helpful and loving in ways that are really not loving and not helpful and potentially really destructive or potentially going to keep somebody from learning a valuable lesson that may be a hard knock, that may be something that really, really blows their you know, pride, but that is vital to their ability to become open-minded to the spirit. So that's what's showing up here. I think one of the things that kind of plays into this is are these ideas of true and false empathy. And mm -hmm. I think the spirit always, always, always wants us to meet ourselves and meet others in the space of true empathy. And basically what that means is like what you said, that is that whoever whoever's in front of you or, you know, whatever you're sitting with that seems like a problem isn't really the problem and even if it seems just like the most real thing that could be happening to you or somebody else and there's panic and there's anxiety and there's fear and whatever the spirit doesn't really see those things as the problem <laughs> so there's always a really deep and high way <laughs> of looking at problems and, you know, inter in, in also in interactions with others. And I think, you know, when we have this true empathy kind of willingness in our minds, it's a little bit easier to see what the real problems are. <laughs> Whereas, you know, false empathy on the other side of things is really joining in somebody else's pain and their struggles and their problems. And we kind of get into solving specific issues. And a lot of times that really doesn't solve anything. And yeah. And, you know, I found myself with others in the past where it seems like they're coming to me with problems and they want to hear my perspective and, you know, really ultimately the spirit's perspective because they're in a place where it seems like they can't hear the spirit themselves. So, you know, they come to me and most of the time <laughs> there is something that is said through me or I make little suggestions for things to try out, basically, you know, opening the mind into a space of experimentation but there are there there have been times where well one thing is that sometimes my mind will go totally blank and it's like i can't i'm not hearing what people say to me 
and, <laughs> and you know when that happens the first time it's like oh my god oh my god like what is happening like I feel like something's broken right and and I think first times that that happened to me it's like there's there's a fear that I'm <laughs> not being helpful and I can't be helpful because I can't hear what the person's saying to me but as I've kind of grown with that sort of thing happening it really I really started taking it as a sign that whatever the person is telling me isn't really important <laughs> and being in this you know kind of like just me being sort of the place where the person gets to say some stuff and then we don't need to talk about it again there's actually nothing to do with it <laughs> so it's kind of just offering this space of emptiness where they can just throw something in and then actually you know when I'm in that space of not being able to store any of the information that they're giving me it ends up like helping them also to see the unreality of the stuff that they've kind of been brewing in their minds and making bigger and, you know, just ruminating uh, around things that really aren't problems. And usually what ends up happening is that we both just end up laughing, which is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, we can, um, usually there's something that that the spirit will end up talking about. And it's really fun. But also, you know, there have been other times where I've heard someone's laments and problems. And it's almost like in my mind, I know what would be helpful in terms of a message to give them. But the spirit is saying, no. Nope. Actually, yeah, I mean, what you're here, what you're thinking about this is right, but giving this information away would be hindering this person's progress in some way because they wouldn't quite get the lesson. And, you know, obviously it's like we have free will here, so I could still say it, but it wouldn't it, like to me it would feel really bad I think and I, I would feel like I would be doing a disservice and so I well, usually when that happens I actually explain it to the person what's going on in my mind around it and usually there's like an understanding like yeah yeah I know what you mean and and I can feel that there's more here that I can explore with myself and with the spirit I can feel you know there are there's an assignment here for me and if you just tell me the thing, then I may have to repeat this lesson a couple more times until it fully sinks in what really is, is, you know, what I'm meant to be learning. So, yeah, I actually, you know, it's a, it's a, it's really important, you know, for those of us that, that find ourselves on this path where particularly where we're put together with other people in some kind of relationship where one helps the other, <laughs> seemingly, that there is a really deep prayer around those communications. And it's not, not to be taken lightly, you know, what our function here is. And there's a real temptation to take on this helper role. And I think that's when things can get a little sideways sometimes because the ego can really take over and want to make a thing out of being a helper and make that your personality and make it your title and make it your job role and your description and you know your your persona on social media <laughs> and then it's really easy to to fall into some place where indiscriminately you're giving away information that on the surface is true and helpful, but in the individual cases can actually be disruptive and hinder someone's progress on their in their own very personal spiritual journey. So 
that's where I'm at with it at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we're just, we, again, are just given these opportunities to really, at least from my experience, to be shown that we really don't know how to be helpful. And we really do need a guide to show us the way. And that we may have gifts and capacities and skills and abilities that we've cultivated over eons, but that the great awakening story is one that requires a vision that is well above my pay grade. And so I was just having some of the, some of the things of my journey, you know, I've said, I've been put through my paces very dynamically as we all have to be if we're going to be available to the spirit and to really know as you said in the beginning how to discern what's what and it was just having a pretty dramatic one for me show up of you know I do morning writing and have for many years of just spirit what do you want me to know and then doing like an automatic writing and when I was in Oregon years ago I heard spirits say um, some people that I care about were going to have an accident. Excuse me? They're going to have an accident. Should I tell them? No. Are you sure? Yep. Next day. Don't want you to be concerned about this, but they're going to go through this. And we want you to hear this now because at this point, I mean, I've received guidance like this my whole life, but I was still doubting the spirit. I was still allowing my mind to play tricks on me with the guidance. And so I, I was told, this is part of you to now see that what we're telling you is so. And it was also, in hindsight, a test. Was I going to pick up the phone and say, hey, don't take the trip? Hey, there's, you know, whatever. And, and I was told there are things that they have to work out in going through this, this experience. And, you know, I was still, even after hearing that, in doubt. <clears throat> and then I'm in the mall buying a cell phone. And all of a sudden, one of the people came into mind. I call them. Don't get anybody. Hey, how you doing? How's the trip? Call back two seconds later. Why did you call just now? They had just had the accident. They were fine, as I was told they would be. Shaken up. Freaked out. No idea what their lessons were, right? But I could have done something that put in motion things that would be very destructive that could have caused a problem right and that could have kept them from whatever they had to go through whatever lessons with spirit with each other whatever healing was required for them I could have been a cog in the wheel and it was a very very powerful lesson and I've had many 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 of them because the little part of me that cares about people and their safety had a story, right? About what that might mean to me, right? It comes back very practically to a personal concern. The personality had a concern when I got that message and I had to sit with it every day in my writing with spirit hearing like, just, just a reminder, you're going to be all right. They're going to be all right. So the spirit knows the plan. The spirit knows what players need to connect with which players, which ones need to talk to those and not those and get this toolbox and not that toolbox. It's very, very specific and very practical. And again, if I hadn't been being put through my paces for many years up until that point, I could not have sat there with my own discomfort about it. So and as you said, lots of messages that I've been told, don't say a word. People have to go through whatever they're going to go through. And I want to be optimally helpful. And my ideas when I got on my path about what was helpful were very different from what they are now. You know, I've had lots of times where spirit has made me look like an idiot in front of people because that's what was most helpful saying something in a class, you know, in my college years, saying things that made everybody turn and look at me like I was an idiot. And I felt like one. <laughs> it was very healing. <laughs> so, you know, we just don't know what's most helpful. And the learning curve, again, can be or felt very steep for me and still is. I'm still 
in my journey of learning how to be helpful. I'm still in my healing process. And so I'm glad this came in as a topic. And I'm glad these messages are being shared. Yeah, I mean, I think I've talked about this before, you know, when I first got on my spiritual journey really deeply and specifically with A Course in Miracles, I got into this very annoying place where I thought I had all the answers. Uh I would tell, you know, I would be trying to teach people all the time what I thought was true. And, you know, in hindsight, I'm sure I was really annoying and you know, I've talked with people too that I've talked with people that find themselves in this place where it feels like the people that are around them are their perception is that they're really closed off to their interests, let's say. And uh, you know, especially if it's spiritual stuff, like if somebody's in a in a marriage and they're really in into their spiritual path and they're just you know internally so lit up by the insights that they're having and it's just there's like a weird thing that wants to happen like this compulsion to just talk about it all the time with their spouse and basically they're just being told off and you know told that you're really annoying me and I don't want to hear any of this. You, you have to find somebody else to talk to about this. <laughs> and, you know, I think that's a deep healing that we have to really, really go through. That we do, we, it's like this pearls before swine thing too, right? It's like this other, oh. this other side of this topic where we really, really need to be discerning about where we are meant to be bringing our gifts, because if we keep landing all this like spiritual wisdom in front of people that are just completely disinterested, it's wasted. And like there it's like we we're losing inspiration in return. And it's not that anything is really wrong with any of the people that are around us. It's just that there needs to be a real prayer around where these things are shared. And you you end up with so much so much frustration if you keep trying to go to places and people that just it's not meant for them <laughs> for whatever reason right and that's not that's not something that i wish on anybody but i think you know it's something that everybody does have to bump up against and really learn that you have to ask the spirit okay where you know the spirit the beautiful prayer from a course in miracles like where would you have me go like what would you have me do what would you have me say and to whom and then just do only that <laughs> and you know not try to control any of the yeah control any of the process it's really important and yeah, to receive a message like that from the spirit around, you know, somebody, somebody that you love is going to go have an accident that that's some deep healing of control, I would say, really, you know, to not fall into the false empathy that I was talking about before, not to fall into, you know, any idea that it's going to be better for them if they don't have this accident. And they get, you know, I was kind of having this image of the butterfly effect in my mind too, that you, you really don't know what, you know, in terms of the big picture of everything, what the effect is going to be when, when you do things out of alignment with the spirit, it's like, you know, the, the idea that a butterfly flapping its wings somewhere halfway around the globe is going to cause a tsunami or a hurricane right on the other side of the of the earth and that's why it's not like it's not a fear-based idea that we're talking about here but it's the ultimate goal of this path of any spiritual path doesn't matter what it's called or where it's from or who teaches it but the goal is to be at peace in our minds and really, I found that the only way I can be at peace with 
connecting with people, doing my own work, doing anything is when I've prayed and I've been given the instructions by the spirit and then follow them to the best of my abilities. That's when I can, you know, because that's that's the guidance that I can really trust. That's a message that I can trust because I know it's coming from a place that has all of the pieces in mind and knows what's most helpful for everything. Yeah, I was just seeing like this image of, you know, if we had a little jar that we had our light in, that we could see the light and we were walking around trying to park a little spark in all these different places you know, I was just sort of seeing some of these Peanuts cartoon characters, the Charles Schultz cartoon characters. Lucy, I think, was the name of one of the characters. She was always pulling the football up before Charlie would go to kick it, you know, yanking it right before, and he'd go flying up in the air and fall down on his back. <laughs> and, you know, these sorts of naughty games that people play. But, you know, it's like I had the same message, the pearls before swines, It sounds a little harsh and judgmental, but, you know, it's like if I'm taking my little jar of light to somebody who has a tsunami over their head, like Pigpen, right? Pigpen walked around this dust cloud around him. If I'm going where I'm not supposed to be going, that dust cloud or that little tsunami over somebody's head energetically can can take my light out. I mean, the spirit is stronger than all of that. But in this realm, we seem to be dealing with trying to stay in balance right within ourselves as you said stay in that place of the channel with the spirit stay in that place of inner peace and stillness Um, and we can do that when we go where we're supposed to when we do what we're supposed to when we share as we're supposed to and you know we can go into dark corners (laughs) of the mind and of this seeming world when we're guided by the spirit, because then we know spirit's got our back and is directing the whole thing. Otherwise, we're going into dangerous territory. And as you said, it doesn't need to be a fear-based conversation, but, you know, we're always talking about holding more light. And the more light you hold, the more power you have. And if you don't know how to use it properly, you're not safe to yourself or anyone else. And you're certainly not going to be of benefit to the spirit if you don't hand it all back. It's all your spirit. Everything that you might do through me, it's yours. You know, you took out that message somewhere before we got on this call, you know, that it's the spirit doing through us to shine our light. And then that those that are supposed to kind of catch wind of it and take it as a message for themselves that, oh, I have this thing within me, just like Yuta. Ah, that light that she seems to be beaming through her? Ah, I'm that also. You know, in the end, we're actually not doing anything. So it's uh, it's a really juicy topic. Is there anything else for you to say? No, I feel like it all came out just really quickly today. So yeah, I think we'll just leave it there. (laughs) <laughs> sounds good sending you all much love yeah thank you thanks for joining me Elizabeth thanks to anybody who's joined in with us today and yeah much love and see you next time <laughs>